The Lord be with you, and welcome to St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Junction City, Wisconsin. I'm Pastor Roser, and on this day we follow the Order of Matins. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. Alleluia. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, O oh, come, let us worship him. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. The deep places of the earth are in his hand. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O oh, come, let us worship him. Turn to Psalm 145. I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall commend your works to another, and shall declare your mighty acts. On the glorious splendor of your majesty, and on your wondrous works, I will meditate. They shall speak of the might of your awesome deeds, and I will declare your greatness. They shall pour forth the fame of your abundant goodness, and shall sing aloud of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and his mercy is over all that he has made. All your works shall give th thanks to you, O Lord, and all your saints shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power to make known to the children of man your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his words and kind in all his works. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand, you satisfy the desire of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and kind in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desire of those who fear him. He also hears their cry and saves them. The Lord preserves all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord, and let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our office hymn this day is number 644 in Lutheran Service Book, the Church's One Foundation. The Church's One Foundation is Jesus Christ her Lord. She is his new creation by water and the word. From heaven he came and 
Testament reading for the fifth Sunday after Pentecost is from the book of Zechariah, chapter 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off and he shall speak peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 11th chapter. At that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. A 
reading from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 7. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh, sold under sin. I do not understand my own actions. For I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law that it is good. So now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inner being, but I see in my members another law, waging war against the law of my mind, and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Grace to you and peace from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Struggle. Like it or not, it's part of our lives. This weekend, we mark our nation's 244th birthday, if you want to call it that, and remember that this country was founded amid a struggle for freedom. Right now, we are struggling to deal with the continued threat of COVID-19 and struggling to get our nation's economy going again. Meanwhile, each and every day, we struggle with one burden after another, the burden of getting out of bed in the morning, the burden of daily decisions, the burden of illness, the burden of death. We Christians also face a unique struggle in our daily lives. God calls us to confess our sin and receive his forgiveness, but the more we confess our sin, the more we realize how sinful we are. The more clearly we understand the nature of God's law and God's gospel, the more difficult this struggle gets. Eventually, we come to the point we want to throw up our hands and cry out, Who will deliver me? Who will deliver me from my daily battles with the evil in the world around me? Who will deliver me from my daily battles with the sin that dwells within me? Paul struggled with those questions. He knew the law of God, but that law didn't help him. More rules and regulations for living didn't give Paul the answer he needed. On the contrary, God's law made things worse. The more we understand about God's law, the more we recognize we cannot keep it. This is what Paul was complaining about when he said, I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. Like us, Paul knew what he was supposed to do. He just couldn't do it. Actually, it was worse than that. Paul noticed that his sinful flesh kept grabbing on to things that he knew were wrong, even though he knew better. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want but I do the very thing I hate. We do the same thing. Sometimes it seems we do things just because they're wrong. Think of how much fun it can be. As kids, we may have done it a lot. A string of pranks on Halloween, those illegal fireworks on the 4th of July. How fast could your first car go? We might brush these things off, but they're not trivial matters. The more we grow in our Christian faith, the more clearly we see our sin. The law of God exposes that sin and increases the pain and struggle of the civil war that's going on inside each one of us. Yes, think of it as a civil war. No war in our nation's history was more bitter. Brothers fought and killed brothers. Members of the same family found themselves on different sides of the battlefield. Even in victory, there was pain. Everyone suffered losses. So we suffer in our inner battles when our sinful actions do not match our holy desires. We try to do what's right, but we fail. And our consciences agonize over our failures. With Paul, we say, I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inner being, but I see in my members another law, waging war against the law of my mind. 
Yes, we regret our sin after the fact. And we swear we'll never get into, give into that sin again. But how many such oaths have we made? And how many times have we turned around and fallen into the same trap, the same sin? Ours is a painful, wretched struggle in our bodies that wars against our minds, making us captive to the law of sin that dwells in our members. Many people simply ignore the struggle. They refuse to face it. They give up the fight. They ignore God's law and the inner voice of their consciences. Such people don't want to listen to the word of God. At least they don't want to listen to those parts of that word that make them feel uncomfortable. They fall away, avoiding gathering with the people of God in church services because the sound of God's law reopens those painful wounds. Eventually, their consciences become so scarred, so deadened, they don't feel the pain anymore. Well, they don't think they do. Past pains of conscience have a way of coming back to trouble us later. Those who cut themselves off from God's law also cut themselves off from God's gospel. Yes, it is true that in spite of our best intentions and efforts, we cannot keep God's law. Like Paul, we will wonder who will deliver me from this body of death. But with Paul, we find the answer to that question in the healing power of the gospel Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. In Jesus Christ, we see that God's love and mercy are far greater than our sin. As powerful and terrible as sin is, it is not so for us. As the hymn writer put it, he breaks the power of canceled sin. He sets the prisoner free. His blood can make the foulest clean. His blood avails for me. Our civil war with sin has been won for us by Christ. He delivers us from our wretched state, our personal struggles. He died for all. And so we are delivered from these bodies of death. In God's word and through his sacraments, we hear that this glorious good news is for us. And we receive that good news from God's gracious hand. In holy baptism, God places the water on us and puts his name on us as he baptizes us into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In holy absolution, God says, I forgive you all your sins. In the Lord's Supper, he declares that this bread and wine, Christ's own body and blood, are given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This personal forgiveness delivers us from our struggles. As we receive this forgiveness, yes, we may become more painfully aware of our sin. As long as we live on this earth, that struggle will continue. Yet at the same time, we also become more joyfully aware of the God's grace given to us in Jesus Christ. Don't look to the law for deliverance. Look to the Lord, our Savior. Through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. And God himself delivers us. But God does not deliver us just so that we can go our own way and do our own thing. He delivers us so that we can grow and live in Him. He delivers us so that we may be holy and devoted to God. God's good news for us leads us to lives that show our thanks to the Savior who delivers and strengthens us. We do this through the many things that God has called us to do in our daily lives. We are husbands and wives, fathers and mothers, sons and daughters, workers and citizens. With sins forgiven by Jesus Christ, God has set before us these callings that are filled with daily opportunities to serve God in our service to the people around us. Yes, we struggle. But because of Christ, we can now face those struggles. For we know that our strength to fight these battles does not come from within us. It comes to us from Jesus Christ. As we grow in faith, we become more and more aware of the demands of God's law. Our struggles with sin and our own sinful flesh will intensify. This civil war within us will be frustrating and debilitating, a true body of death. Time and time again we will cry out, who will deliver me? And time and time again. Through his word and his sacraments, God's forgiving love for us will prove to be greater than our sin. His word and promise is a comfort for this life and a promise for the life to come. 
Thanks be to God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue with the Te Deum. We praise you, O God, we acknowledge you to be the Lord. All the earth now worships you, the Father everlasting. To you, all angels, cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To you, cherubim and seraphim, continually do cry. Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth, Heaven and earth are full of the majesty of your glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise you. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise you. The noble army of martyrs praise you. The holy church throughout all the world does acknowledge you. The father of an infinite majesty, your adorable true and only son, also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. You are the King of glory, O Christ. You are the everlasting Son of the Father. When you took upon yourself to deliver man, you humbled yourself to be born of a virgin. When you had overcome the sharpness of death, you open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You sit at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that you will come to be our judge. We therefore pray you to help your servants, whom you have redeemed with your precious blood. Make them to be numbered with your saints, in glory everlasting. O Lord, save your people and bless your heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify you and we worship your name forever and ever. Grant, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us have mercy upon us. O Lord, let your mercy be upon us, as our trust is in you. O Lord, in you have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer. And let my cry come to you. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, your mercy attends us all our days. Be our strength and support amid the wearisome changes of this world. And at life's end, grant us your promised rest and the full joys of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. O oh God and King, as once your people received you in joy, open our hearts to re rejoice in your coming, so that we may meet you in your word and sacrament for the forgiveness of our sins and the strengthening of our faith. Help us to bless and extol your name before the nations and to declare your salvation to the generations to come, proclaiming that you are merciful and gracious and abounding in steadfast love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our Creator and Lord, from you all things come, and to you all things are directed. Provide for our nation faithful leaders who will hear and heed your law, protect and defend the citizens, preserve the precious gift of liberty, and inspire us to use our freedom honorably. 
Make us mindful of the heritage of our, our forebears have given to this land. And guide us to be faithful in our stewardship of all the resources you have provided. Hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O oh, wise and giving God, you are the God of truth, and in you no, is no falsehood or deception. Help us to delight in your law, to love what is good and true and right, and to seek after these things. Help us to wage war against the old Adam within us. Restore us when we stray from your word, and forgive us when we give in to the devil's temptations. Hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O compassionate Lord, we do not suffer alone the pain and afflictions of this life, but we live them out within your grace and are sustained by your mercy. Hear us on behalf of the sick, those who suffer, the grieving, and those to whom death is near. According to your will, deliver them from their afflictions, and give to all your strength, patience, and hope that they may endure to eternal life. Show compassion and drive all pestilence from our land. Hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, that all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. And on this 4th of July weekend, we close with hymn 966. Before you, Lord, we bow, our God who reigns above, and rules the world below, bound less in power and love. Our thanks we at rest protected by your care for this bright day for this fair land gifts of your hand our thanks we pay may every mountain hide each vale and forest green shine in your words pure light and its rich fruits be Join to raise a grateful song. Earth, hear your Maker's voice, your great Redeemer own. Believe, obey, rejoice, and worship Him alone. Cast down your pride, your sin deplore, and bow before the He comes, oh, may our native land from all its rending tombs send forth a glorious band, a countless throng with joy to sing to heaven's high King salvation song. The Lord be with you.